Hey everybody, this is James Pelton. I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, I'm having a great day. So I hope you guys are as well. Wouldn't seem fair if it was only me. So uh, appreciate all you guys being here. Ben is running just a couple of minutes behind, but he will be here. Uh, he did email me, let me know, hey, I'm going to be a couple minutes late. He told me that I was okay to do some dad jokes. Not dag jokes, dad jokes. So I might be doing some of that. Um, but before we get to that, I want to first welcome you. If you don't like, well, like this video, if you don't already subscribe, I would appreciate you subscribing. Um, so I would appreciate that. Jungle Joe Crypto, welcome to my community. Great to have you. Um, and go ahead and get your questions started uh, for Ben. So I have some questions that I want to get through myself, um, but then we will open it up to the audience. You guys can ask what you're curious about. Um, obviously there's some things that, you know, can't talk about as much as other things. Um, but go ahead and just let me know your questions. I'll kind of filter through those and we will begin to ask. Um, so again, hit the like button and let's start it off while we're waiting for Ben. Um, let's start it off. What is your favorite project or which project do you think has the most potential on in the DAG ecosystem? Go ahead and just say in the comments, which DAG protocol do you think has the most potential and then i also want you to comment which one do you think i like the most which dag ecosystem project do you think i like the most i'll give you just a second to see if anyone can can guess on that before i spoil it um, but we have ads from sammy yeah ads definitely ltx uh, is another one. And if you guys haven't watched, if you don't know what ADS is or LTX or Genico, um, I've done videos on all these different projects. So just, you know, you can look those up and learn more about them. Um, Genico, my belief has most long-term potential of all metagraphs. Your, be your belief, BioFi. So Julius, we got some people guessing. Um, I don't know if you're guessing I'm going to say BioFi or if you're saying BioFi. Funny, funny Turo says Genico. Um, yeah, Genico doing some very cool things. Um, if you haven't looked at what they're doing, let me just pull up my uh, my old screen here. But yes, uh, Jennyco earning rewards with your personal AI health companion. And I I want to have the Jennyco team. If anybody from the Jennyco team is watching, let's have you guys back on because I'm very interested um, what you're doing with AI. It's been a while since my last AMA with you guys. Um, you say BioFi. Okay. Yeah, spoiler alert, I do love BioFi. So shout out to the BioFi team. Um, I think doing some really, really big things, especially with the uh, this mobile phone, um, the Phoenix X1, which the name is up for debate. If you have a better name, then we definitely can uh, talk about that. But doing some huge, huge, huge things. Um, and DAG is going to be obviously a big part of that. Um, so excited about that. Let's see what, what else we got here. Um, a lot of people saying ADS. Um, which I do, I do love ADS again, they're kind of decentralizing, um, ads pretty much. So right now Google has a monopoly on ads. And when you go to different websites, Google's getting all that data and they're basically, they're the ones that make them and the businesses are the ones who make all the profit off of your data. Same with, same with Jennyco in healthcare. Um, there's all sorts of people that are using your information to make money for themselves and we don't get any piece of it. Um, so that's where, you know, I'm really excited about, well, really crypto in general, um, decentralization in general. Um, but I love that we can get in and take a piece of that pie. Um, healthcare spending is massive. Genico brings major innovation to that industry. Yeah. And I, and I do love it. It's a, it's a win, win, win situation. So it's a win. You get money for your healthcare and it's also a win for the healthcare providers. They actually end up getting better data. Um, when it's shared directly from you instead of kind of roundabout taken from you uh, in another way. So love that. Obvious. Um, did anybody say uh, Cyberlete, drone industry? Julius is the real MVP. Yes. No, I appreciate all you guys being here. Um, right now, what's your opinion on elephant futures? And you know what? We're not going to talk about, I will only talk about on this video um, constellation specific projects. So if you want my opinion on any constellation projects, elephant is not a constellation project. So we'll leave that for another time. Uh, I am going to be doing a members only AMA, um, at three 30 central time. So right after this video, we'll, we'll hop on there and you can get, ask me anything about anything. Um, is sky using the DAG network? I do not believe so, but 
um, they probably probably should. Um, honestly, it's a you know faster and cheaper. So I mean, there would not be a reason to not use it. So is the team still planning on generate generative tokenomics? Great question. Yeah, let's let's not forget. You can start your questions. Uh, start them rolling now. And what I do is I go click star next to them. And then once I get through all my questions, because I'm a selfish YouTuber who focuses on my questions before yours. Um, but once we uh, get through all my questions, then we'll start getting to your guys's um, and we'll uh, we'll make sure we get as many of those answered as we can while we have Ben here with us. Um, all right. So my plan, one of my plans was I was going to use chat GPT to write some constellation jokes. Um, but I found a flaw in AI. OK, it does not. It's not funny. OK, AI is very helpful. Chat GPT is very, uh, very helpful for a lot of things. It is not good at humor. Why don't cryptocurrency holders ever get lost? Because they all actually that that one's not bad. Um, that's not too bad. Uh, how does Constellation Network fix its problems with a hard fork, but always in a direct acyclic, acyclic way? It's not good. Chat GPT is not not uh, not good. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. We get Ben is here. Mario says sounds good. Can't wait till three o'clock. Yes. Well, let's go ahead and bring on Ben. Enough of me and my chat GPT humor. Let's bring on Ben here. Ben, welcome. It's been too long. So good to have you yeah. back. How are you doing today? James, good to see you again, man. It's been, what, since high def? Uh, yep, yeah. that, I, that was the last time. So a lot has happened since then. Yeah. Um, we have questions uh, coming in already. I've got some of my own questions. So really excited to uh, just catch up. Um, again, Dag, one of my one of the things I'm most excited about in the space. So it only seems fitting to you know get some info and uh, have you on for some questions. So yeah, let's go it's, ahead. It's good to chat with you again. I don't think we've done like a chat for like years though. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the good old days of crypto when we talked. Right, but <laughs> yeah, bull market days. Right, it was a yeah. little bit easy easier time to be a crypto YouTuber. I'll tell you that. Um, but no, this is this is where the millionaires are made. I mean, that sounds cliche and everybody says that all the time. But these are the types of prices you go look at altcoins. These are the prices that you buy in at that when the bull market hits, we have these all these uh, crypto ETFs coming in right now. I just saw Fidelity is getting a, a Bitcoin ETF. And, and we'll talk all about this uh, as we're going. Um, yeah, maybe uh, lots of thoughts on all that stuff. But yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I know there's there's going to be no shortage of content uh, with with you and with me because we're we we got opinions on a lot of things. Um, maybe I will start. So I think there's a lot of people here that are from you know the constellation ecosystem or from my channel. They're very familiar with you. But maybe for people who aren't familiar, can you quickly introduce yourself and then just a quick mm -hmm. elevator pitch? We'll say uh, ground floor to sixth floor elevator pitch of what you're trying to build with constellation. That's always the tough part, right? Uh, so I'm Ben Jorgensen. I'm the CEO of Constellation Network. Um, most notably, we're building uh, infrastructure layer protocol uh, or decentralized network. Um, we call ourselves a layer zero, which allows consensus on the base layer while allowing um, applications to do consensus on the layer one. Uh, so essentially, we're building an ecosystem that allows people to take a blockchain in a box, build their own network with their own node operators, uh, which provides more flexibility for developers. Um, most notably, uh, we've done a lot of stuff in the IoT space by acquiring a company called Door Technologies. Uh, and we've done a lot of uh, stealth work with the Department of Defense on using um, immutability and public ledgers to identify threat vectors across uh, databases. Uh, I think that's kind of the high level on, on Constellation. Our currency is DAG. Um, so DAG is used uh, uh, for securing throughput or bandwidth on the network, much like you'd think of um, how you pay for cloud services. Okay, very good. And we have a few people uh, asking, saying your audio is not good. Um, can you yeah. turn the volume? Oh, man, that's a bummer. Let's see. Any better? Oh yeah, that's that's a lot better. How how does that sound for you, audience? Ben is not a professional YouTuber, so he doesn't have the nice sure mic, you know, in front of him right right now. 
Uh, I knew really you would get one, honestly. It's like, but then that takes you to another level of like, now are you a tech CEO or are you a YouTube marketing voice, right? So I, yep. I don't know. Uh, well, if you, yeah, maybe maybe I'll send you one, you know, for uh, next time. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead. We got qu a lot of questions coming in. So again, I'm going to go through my questions and then um, we'll start getting to your cool. guys' questions. So just ask away and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, but first off, uh, I hate to start it off with with talking about this, but I get asked a lot about you guys had a hack, not of your ecosystem, but you just kind of want to explain what happened with that and kind of what was done to, to mitigate that and just talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this was a hack that was not on our technology. So I'd like to set that first, like we are secure, things are up. Um, this was actually an attack on an individual. Um, and what happened was it was a phishing exercise. So like you get SMS or emails, you get emails from so many people, they try to disguise themselves as venture groups or even market makers. Uh, and the moment you click that link, you're kind of opening yourselves up uh, to a potential threat. Uh, and a lot of what's going on in the crypto space and scams are people that once they get access to a computer or um, uh, some sort of application, they're actually running scripts to look for crypto wallets and addresses to see if there's anything there. Uh, and so it's really kind of a vulnerability there. And then when once these things get open, you're, you're really kind of open for punishment. Um, and so what happened was, uh, was just that. Uh, so it was really hard to detect. And once we saw it happening, we started checking other wallets and access um, at which we started to notice uh, the hack happening in real time as I was on a, a phone call with a few other people and we're all kind of checking all the systems. Um, and luckily we had a really good relationship with exchanges that we were able to kind of identify um, the breach and, uh, and, and kind of stop the burn where it was. But obviously it's a really scary moment for anybody and it can happen to literally anybody out there uh, we've known a lot of people in our ecosystem that have been that have been attacked through phishing exercises. Um, the, the hacks are really good these days. Um, I'm not going to lie. I I probably thwart off like three or four a year that are just like I mean you're just running all the different tests and like seeing where it is and sometimes it takes like 48 hours to figure out right. Um, and so this one had a clear goal. They had a clear goal and. Uh, we were able to kind of mitigate the burn, but yeah, that's kind of what happened. Really okay. unfortunate, really shakes everybody up because you just violated on another level. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. Well, and you had, if you haven't gotten scammed in the crypto space, I would say you haven't been here very long because it's, uh, <laughs> it's all over the place. And I actually, I had one of my wallets, um, emptied of, I had approved my BUSD on a website and then someone got a hold of that smart contract that I had approved and they emptied my BUSD. So it's, it's just a, it's a dangerous place. So, um, again, just good reminders for all of us. Um, uh, let, yeah, just be careful. <laughs> yeah, like, be careful. It is, it's a bummer. Cause you know, it's hard enough to get returns in this space. And then when you get some returns and then your wallet's emptied, it is, it can be pretty, uh, pretty depressing, but you know, it is what it is. You know, I think um, the one lesson I'll say, James, out of that is like we we were very community minded. Um, even though that individual lost a bunch, it was more about like how we protect the rest of the community from seeing this just like cripple uh, the ecosystem. And I, I think we did a, a pretty good job. Um, of course, we're taking new measures uh, now every day and new practices and talking with um, and new solutions and partners out there. And the space is getting better. I mean, there are more solutions and people that are catering to a full set of solutions out there. Okay, very good. Some some people are still saying hard to hear. Um, I don't know if yeah, you want to take these off. Maybe okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You look like you look less like a gamer now, though. Oh nope, can't hear you at all now. Okay, now how are we doing now? Oh, that's beautiful. That sounds oh, wonderful. Really? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. God, I'm sorry. That sucks. No, nope, you're good. This is the beauty of life. See, this is how everyone knows this is authentic, wasn't staged or anything like that. Is uh, these these technical problems. So let's go on to let's let's talk about the regulatory environment 
because that's every, on everybody's mind, you know, Binance getting sued, Coinbase getting sued, and just it's up in the air it's here in the U.S. especially. Um, what's kind of your take on just the regulatory space and how Constellation fits in with that? Are you concerned or what are your take? What's your take on that? Yeah, so interesting enough, a lot of my job is to keep track of the regulatory space, come up with my own conspiracy theories, whatever you have, like I've got them all. And, um, and, and I speak uh, mostly to lawyers, other partners, what's going on in the space. And I think I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Um, and so there's a couple of things going on. We're, we're seeing a lot of companies leave the United States to go to offshore entities. And it's not because of simple like tax tax benefits. It's actually because there's regulatory frameworks in place. There's actually guidance uh, that projects are getting. And so it's not necessarily about avoiding taxes as it is uh, about just having clear guidelines. And the, and the United States just doesn't have clear guidelines and they're refusing uh, to outwardly say it. Um, and so, so I think that's one thing that's happening and we're kind of losing this battle uh, in, in many ways. Like we had this entrepreneurial mindset in the United States and we're really use, losing uh, that innovative spirit to other countries that are just saying, well, here are the guidelines, operate in those guidelines and you're good to go. I mean, from a U.S. as a U.S. company, that's I mean, that would have saved us millions of dollars in legal fees over the past several years by having clear guidelines. I mean, we're covering uh, we cover our bases so much that we're like every gray area we have to kind of plan for and account for, which is literally exhausting. And maybe that becomes my super peer, super power here or superpower out of this, but um, it's rather exhausting. And so, but beyond that, um, we've kind of known this is coming and uh, I've actually been working on kind of some, a, a thought piece around this to give people a little more confidence is that I'm actually excited for this next tranche. Um, and it plays really nicely in the whole BlackRock, ETF, SEC. Um, I, I think a lot of the government was uh, late to the game with the FTX, but that was kind of their fall guy. And it gave them kind of a reason to come in and be like, oh, this is all, this industry is really bad. It's actually just bad actors doing bad business practices. That being said, um, and that's what's actually coming out of the courts. So if you actually look at, at some of the, so the SEC is not, they're not lawmakers. Um, they're, they're supporting the law. They're upholding the law. And so they're not lawmakers. So a lot of these things that are going to courts around whether it's a security or is it a securities violation is actually getting turned down and saying, oh, no, that was wire fraud or banking fraud. Um, or bad business practices, right? It, it's not about like the security or utility of the token. Not That's still a topic, but that hasn't actually gone through yet. So I do think there's some positive things that are happening from the regulatory standpoint. Now, that's not the SEC, right? So <laughs> we are in a point that we need the the government needs to start laying down what are the guidelines to operate a business in this industry. This industry is still one of the most fascinating things that's come in lifetimes. Yeah, the amount agreed. of money and billions that have been created over a few years, and that ultimately has gone into tax dollars in some capacity to some country. It's brought a lot of innovation in so many different ways. Like there's a lot of positive things that I think the government's coming a little too hard on this industry that's brought a lot of abundance uh, to this world and a lot of um, social mobility in so many ways. What's been interesting is watching Black. If you know the history of BlackRock, they made their boom in the '80s when they acquired a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, real estate uh, that was really kind of depreciated assets in so many ways. And they came in as juggernauts and just acquired a ton of things. Well, guess what we're seeing in crypto? Well, BlackRock's also starting to look at the commercial. Uh, real estate world right now in tandem with crypto, right? Commercial real estate could go through a really bad uh, period of time uh, as on the outset of COVID. Uh, and so it's kind of this beautiful orchestration of the SEC comes in as the bad guy, but they don't want to say that USDT is a security, maybe because they owe $80 billion in, in government T-bills. Um, and then BlackRock comes out and we're like, hey, we're going to we're actually going to take take over this industry. 
uh, it scares me a little bit because it goes away from the ethos of community power empowerment uh, and open source. And it's it kind of remind and, and we start to like champion the fact that BlackRock's coming in here to kind of like save the day and and bring ETFs. Yes, it's a sign of more maturity in a space, uh, which means more liquidity, but it also kind of threatens um, some of the ethos that, I mean, I personally got into the space for. So that was a long-winded answer, but um, I have a lot of things to say about the regular. Yeah, regular. no, that, that's good. Yeah, you'll have to stop me from, uh, I've got my own opinions on it, but I, I totally agree with you that on one sense, I like that, you know, BlackRock coming in is, going to you know get exposure to the space but on the other hand it starts it takes it one step closer to just turning into traditional finance and you know that's how right. traditional finance is set up and i don't like that i want decentralized and i don't want you know these few companies that control everything where if if blackrock is you know if they're 90 percent of the entire crypto market cap then they're going to be right. in control of everything so totally with you on that i mean look you you have this scenario of like an like the old guard of you know the people that run the world being very threatened by this like new money new opportunity coming in and actually kind of doing some interesting things that you kind of see the marketing hit this industry they're like wow it's super fragile we can get crypto communities to turn on on the actual projects we can make this kind of this industry a four letter word um and it's like don't fall or don't succumb to that bullshit. Don't succumb to it. Don't go to that level. Like go back to why you got into this and like use that energy to kind of build up these technology companies like us that, that are taking massive risks uh, uh, in so many different ways, not only just on the innovation side, but operating in a regulatory gray area is not a fun thing to do. I'd much rather in some days I'd much rather go build a SaaS company that, you know, sold door to door for, for whatever reason. Yeah. Nope. Totally agree with that. Um, George is asking, this goes along with this. So I'll bring it up, but what's the threat of DAG being considered a security? Can you evaluate that for us? Well, I, you know, I don't really want to believe, I want to talk more about the technology. I'm not going to talk about like our specific uh, token as a security. Um, you know, as of, any business in the United States are, are always, um, they have an open door to regulation and anybody can come in the door and, and start to demand things in the United States, right? Um, so every business is kind of open to interpretation and practice. I think every currency out there is open to interpretation. Um, our focus right now is to show how uh, DAG is a utility on our network to purchase throughput uh, and allow kind of application support and people to use our decentralized network. Um, so, I mean, nobody is impervious to the view of uh, the eyes of, of regulators. I mean, they just aren't. Um, however, we're still seeing, like I said, yes, I think the industry is scared mm -hmm. that like, oh, this is going to be deemed a security. But if you actually look and do the research in the court hearings um, and the outcomes, it's they've been... Uh, very cautious not to identify whether these are securities uh, or whether they're utility tokens, but whether these are bad business practices on how they're uh, acquiring money or sending money, right? And I think that's a really important thing to know. Um, I do think what's coming down in the in the um, in the future is that they are going to be looking more at new and emerging companies that just start their fundraising process. How are they selling a token? How are they distributing it? Um, that uh, they are going to take a closer look. I, I don't know how they would undo all the stuff that's out there today. It, it, to me, that's like the thing that racks my brain is like, okay, you know, I mean, if you get deemed a security, what is that? Like a fee? Okay, then, then how do you go through and unwind everything that's already out there? Like it's, it's quite a big mess. So you kind of have to start at ground zero of projects that are starting today. Right. So that I think that's a lot of my I'll leave that. on. OK, no, nope, that was good. That was good. I like that answer. Um, and so whenever we're talking about regulation, I always you know, one of, the, one of the things that I've always liked about Constellation is, you know, working with the Department of Defense and things like that. Um, can you just talk about 
Um, maybe just give us an update on it's been so long since we've talked. W what's yeah. going on with that? Is that is there still a contract there? Tell us what's going on with oh, the Department yeah. of Defense. Yeah, so pretty, um, I think like a month ago, we announced that we have a direct contract um, or, or it's called a sole source contract with the Depart uh, with the United States Air Force. So over the past couple of years, we were, we were involved in what they called an SBIR, Small Business and Innovation Research, uh, which is a, a pool of money that they basically give you to build out either relations or a demo. And we created a full functioning demo, which won us a direct contract with the government, which awarded us uh, more capital and money to build out features um, that will really kind of come over into the core protocol. I'm getting a little echo. That's, it sounds okay to me. Okay. okay. Then I'll just push through it. Just ignore it. Yeah. Just ignore it. Um, yeah. So we're actually doing a lot more with them. And what that means is that the contracting vehicle really allows us to stack on other agencies into that, uh, that vehicle. Uh, we're able to stock on more budget, uh, identify different use cases between multiple agencies. And I think the best way to look at the work with the DOD is it's not just one customer. It's like being open to thousands of customers right? That will all have different use cases and needs and wants. Um, and now we're just making it very easy to procure uh, and work with our network and services. Okay. Very good. Now, when you say sole source contract, does that just mean like not, there's not competition or what, what does that mean? Sole source? Yeah, contract? That means like a direct, there's a direct line into the United States Air Force, right? Before we were pulling on a budget from the small business and innovation research bucket. Now we're going after the budget of uh, the Air Force, which I think is for private third party companies is somewhere in the $400 billion. Um, and in the research sector alone, which is where we kind of land, is around $172 billion every year where they're paying for research and innovation, um, kind of enhancing what we currently have. So it's a large, large, large pool of money. And then what you can also deem from that is that other agencies that have their own budgets can come in and operate under that vehicle if they find similar mechanisms that actually work for their use case. Okay, very good. That's very, very exciting. Um, so another question, do you just want to talk about, I'd like to just hear your opinion on this, but how has the bear market affected the Constellation ecosystem? How has it affected you guys like emotionally and personally? Um, just tell us how the bear market's been compared to the bull market last time uh, that we met. Yeah, yeah. Um, whew, man, there's, I mean, the past two years are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's funny, right? Like, oh, what were your past two years of your life like? Well, they weren't as good as they were the prior two. <laughs> um, uh, so it's funny enough you said that. I, I actually was invited to a, a very intimate dinner last night with Lightspeed Ventures, really big in the crypto world. They invited like 22 of us around. Um, we actually went to, to Gozu uh, in San Francisco, which I co-own with an amazing chef. Uh, and we all it was all around uh, building in, during the bear, right? And it was kind of this, and what I saw out of this dinner was something, uh, a, a mosaic of individuals that were extremely professional. I'm not going to reveal who they were. Um, we all kind of said we'd keep uh, keep our mouth shut. Uh, but everybody was very serious about building in this space, right? And it wasn't just blockchain tech, and it wasn't just crypto. Uh, it was a balance, and everybody saw a huge opportunity in the coming years and months, uh, which is really cool. I mean, like. I, and hearing that was a positive aspect that I saw coming out of the bear market, right? It's this ability to bring the community together and be like, hey, we're all in the same boat. And how are you guys doing, right? Um, I wrote an investor email to, um, you know, a lot of our shareholders uh, at Constellation. And there's so much positivity that's come in uh, into Constellation. Um, Door, the company we acquired two years ago, restarted shipping hardware this year, which they weren't able to do during COVID. Uh, we've seen uh, increases in revenue across the door business. We're getting ready to deploy metagraphs, which are the blockchain in a box where people have the flexibility to build networks. Like uh, we've, And then there's been some really tough times. We've had to go through a couple rounds of layoffs, um, which really consolidated our team, but also really focused our team. 
And uh, we did a little happy hour last week and everybody has an opinion and excitement about the space. They don't feel beaten down. Um, each person is putting on multiple hats at Constellation across multiple different products and revenue streams. And they're starting to, and we're all starting to see it all come together. So it's kind of that time that like focus is actually going to really, uh, really kind of show itself coming out here. And a lot of the noise is going to fall off and it's going to be a lot easier for people to really adopt this next stage. And James, like um, one of the reflections I've had is like, you know, in, in 2018, we went through that awful winter. And then in 2019, I remember all the crypto funds were like, hey, we got to find a use case for this technology outside of the currency. And so like supply chain management was like the use case of the time and everybody was investing in supply chain management, but there was really no value there. And um, it was in, but we were trying to find these applications and utility around that's beyond crypto because regulators were going after ICOs. Well, flash forward to today, we have the same people, the same problems that are going on. We have the same actors, right? The SEC is now going after the drug cartels, the exchanges, which the exchanges have all the money. So they're going to be able to battle this in a very different way uh, than just individual ICOs. Um, and you, you've also got people looking for more utility, uh, adoption of the network, Crypto communities are wiser. They're looking at like, okay, how do I work with this? What are they thinking? Uh, it's not just about a press release. They actually want to see things um, kind of manifesting themselves in, in actuality. Uh, but we have these same actors. The only thing that's holding us apart from finding that real utility is kind of the DeFi space has really been the bonding agent of like, wow, there's so much liquidity here that they're holding on. And I think we're going to go through this next spell in the next like 24 months around back to really real utility of cryptocurrency, incentivizing uh, node operators and miners uh, using a token, uh, actually seeing a token connect to an application and showing how those inner workings work. We're going to go back to that traditional thing like we did in, in 2019, but the use case potential is a lot more massive. Okay. Very good. Very good answer. Um, audience, I've got two couple more questions for me and then we'll start getting to yours. We're up to 27 questions from the audience. So we're not going to get through all of those, but I'll kind of get through as many uh, as we can. Um, I wanted to kind of hear just how you, do, how you feel um, that AI might fit in with what, what you guys are doing or with what the space is doing. Um, just kind of your take. Does it, you feel like that has any impact on anything oh, in this space? I've been like waiting for this like moment, right? When we uh, when we started in 2017, it was all around, we had like a whole pitch around big data and people were like, what the heck's big data? I mean, you know, machine learning was kind of the the engineering skill set around use, using big data, but big data was primarily used for like sales and marketing automation. Um, and it really, AI was still kind of a nascent tool but mostly used around sales and marketing automation. It wasn't in the hands of consumers. Uh, and so big data was kind of largely not misunderstood. AI has been the, is getting AI into the consumer hand or the retail consumer has been an amazing boom that's just starting. Like we have yet to see what is about, I mean, we're starting to see, I look on Twitter and like people putting out applications that use AI. Heck, we've used AI as like a, an advanced salesperson for door, like really interesting stuff. Um, and we've experimented with all this. So, but AI really is kind of the application and that application needs inputs of data. What's interesting about AI is that when you have all these inputs of data and what our ecosystem is starting to qu question, what crypto questions is like the source of that information, who has central control over the inputs of data. We're actually starting to see a migration or convergence between data and crypto. And we don't even really realize it, but they actually play hand in hand, right? Crypto questions, the ethos of centralization, AI is using centralization to create outputs that are dictating and orchestrating our life in interesting ways. Um, and so one of the things that I see like Constellation, because we played in this like validating data at the source, it's going to play a very pivotal role in AI in our ability to provide some sort of proof of source for all data inputs into AI. 
That's a really big vision that is actually, and you don't even need to trust me. You can look up something called uh, the Unified Data Library or UDL. And it's a government uh, initiative to consolidate data and be able to validate all the data that's out there so we understand all the different inputs so that then that data that's validated can be exchanged knowing the source of all data. And this is a huge effort that's going to come down the way in the next probably 12 months by the government, right? It's like, what is going on with data? What are these inputs? How are they validated? And the only way, one of the only ways that I really see this happen is that using a decentralized network is the only trustless way to say that that, that, that data is valid and it is what it says, that mm. proof of source or source data. Yeah, no, absolutely. Totally, totally agree. So I'm excited to see what the future brings. So yeah. very, it's very exciting time. Uh, it is. Me. I think we all needed that, right? Like we needed to see what was like the next I think everybody thought the metaverse would be like the next big thing. And it still, I think, has a really big play in this. But AI was like that. Oh, my God, I see the impact instantly. Right. It's and chat GPT really opened up those doors and brought it to the directly to the consumer versus AI using a business intelligence tool, business intelligence tool uh, today. So pretty fascinating what's to come. You know, uh, Ray Kurzweil had this whole vision that we'd see the singularity by 20, 2030, and now he's predicting like 2027, uh, we might see that we can't discern between robots and man pretty quickly. Well, and it's moving so quickly that, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised by the end of this year. It's just crazy how fast, once ChatGPT came out, it's crazy how fast uh, things have just been moving since then with with it, with everything, so. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty crazy. And I, you know, one of the things I look at like decentralization, the value of cryptocurrency is that it's such an easier way uh, to account for or attribute incentives to people. And so I can imagine a world where people are getting paid to contribute uh, their data. Well, how do you how do you set up an accounting infrastructure for that? Uh, decentralized networks or individuals as nodes that are contributing certain data that would go to AI that might provide them actual value and, and good recommendations. I, I see a future happening rather quickly and it's not some, um, you know, sci-fi show. Yep. Absolutely. feels like that though sometimes, but yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, can you kind of talk about, so let's talk about a uh, last, last question for me, then we'll get to audience questions. So thank you guys all for joining. Yeah. Um, what, what are you excited about coming up in the future for, uh for the graph um what's what's the most what's what's coming up soon and then what are you looking forward to like in the far future yeah um so um my my bit of alpha is that uh which we just went through a bunch of planning uh the week of july 10th is going to be pretty pretty eventful uh i'm pretty excited about this we've got a lot of things being released all during the week um that are, are really kind of paving the path for metagraphs to go live on, on mainnet. Uh, so July 10th is, is a full packed week. Uh, it's, I mean, we wanted to do a little earlier. It's 4th of July in, in the, the States. So, you know, we don't know how many people would be actually watching, but I, I'd imagine our community is watching like every 20 seconds. So it wouldn't actually matter, but July 10th is a nice culmination of a lot of things getting released all at once where you see all the pieces coming together. Um, tomorrow we've got the DTM app coming out with a, a major update. Um, our team's pretty pumped on what's coming. Uh, what's going on in the future, we've got amazing roadmaps, interoperability mapped out in the near future, uh, focusing on the EVM, uh, which I think we've been very public around what we've been doing. Uh, so, uh, I mean, like, there, there's some cool things, um, a lot, but just wait for July yeah. 10th. Like, I, July I don't know is the next I'm on the edge, right? Okay. Like, I'm not going to just tell you what's going to happen, but there's also new people coming into our orbit at Constellation that kind of bring more credibility to our work in the commercial and federal sector that I'm excited about. Um, all in all, it's it's really fun time. Okay, so if you look forward, we'll say three years. Where do you kind of see Constellation, the ecosystem? What do you see different in, in a perfect world if everything kind of goes according to plan? 
Yeah. So um, don't hold this to me on a road roadmap. Three years is a long ways out. It is. Reasonable to, we, you know, it's reasonable to, to kind of paint a vision, but um, I do see, you know, kind of looking at the initiatives with the, you know, like I said, the unified data library, UDL, um, looking at kind of the data monetization piece, uh, how AI is really taking shape and creating its own market, uh, really kind of putting the application layer on top of big data. Um, I do see a lot of what we're doing, kind of building the inroads uh, for validated data into data exchanges, right? Without the need of a centralized operator orchestrating uh, data exchanges, I think we'll actually start to see true um, interoperability of data sets through a microservice framework like Constellation that plugs in with uh, existing APIs into legacy systems that easily add, you know, Web3 tooling and immutability. Um, I think a lot of all, I, I'll see a lot of that come to, to fruition. Uh, what does that look like? It looks like a kind of data exchange practices, people being able to sell their data, machines selling their data, plugging in your data feed, validating the data, knowing that that valid data <clears throat> is going into the right uh, application. Uh, and I think that's going to be, we needed AI to see that vision of where a data exchange can go at scale and in a programmatic sense. We have data exchanges today, like Snowflake, um, actually some of our partners, uh, but it's very manual, right? Uh, and so when we're starting to see kind of interoperability of applications and APIs that also leverage immutability and validation, uh, we're going to see the next frontier of data. Okay, very good. Um, all right, let's get to audience questions. And audience, you can keep them coming. We're not going to get through all of these, but I'll, I'll skip around to which ones kind of look interesting. Um, is the team still planning on generative tokenomics? And can you maybe explain, again, elevator pitch, uh, what, what that is? Yeah, I mean, so a lot of what we are currently doing is a lot of generative tokenomics, right? That's kind of the idea um, that when you kind of give back to what, what gets attention in the ecosystem ultimately drives utility, right? You don't have to force it. Uh, and so we're already kind of, we're already implementing that. And when you see Metagraphs come into the ecosystem and they start to put their own incentivization layer on their network and they use uh, the hypergraph to kind of validate or take snapshots of their application status, you're going to start to see which applications are really relevant and which are not. Um, as such, nodes will be able to point themselves at different metagraphs to give more support. And so you see kind of a restruct an organic restructuring of the network based on utility of the network, based on incentives, which ultimately, you know, connect to kind of real world results. So that, that generative tokenomics is really still going into effect right now in, in so many ways. And they'll see it more come together as metagraphs go live. Okay. Nope. Good answer. Um, and I was going to ignore this question or not ignore, I was going to skip over this question, but I actually had several people ask about it. So I'll go ahead and bring it up. Um, is Wyatt still with the company? Yes. Wyatt is still with the company. Yes. Okay. All right. Several people asked about that. So he might, you know, he's more of a tech guy, right? So tech guys, you know, kind of stay back a little bit behind the scenes a little bit. So, sure. Uh, Funny Turo wants to know, is it easy to develop on the DAG network? If there's, you know, potential uh, project founders or developers watching, uh, how easy is it to develop on the DAG network? Yeah, I think, um, so a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week? I don't know. These weeks start to come together. We released an update to testnet that, that kind of provided, uh, an update to a framework that made it easier to add or input your logic, um, and to, uh, create a metagraph. Um, you know, Version one of releasing our SDK, you had to get in and understand the tessellation repo. It was rather cumbersome. But what was fascinating to me and our team and what we're excited about is that we're constantly trying to make it easier for developers to build on Constellation. I wouldn't say that we're the easiest uh, to build on. Um, we're going to try to get there. And that's kind of our goal. And as we roll out more frameworks, It'll be kind of adjusting frameworks to different use cases that we see are popular in the network so that people can just like add their inputs and be able to run a metagraph. And a metagraph is kind of, um, it's more similar to parachains. So very few people are taking this kind of web integration model that say Polkadot and parachain, parachains have taken. Um, and I think we're very unique in that way, which I'm very like 
proud about, right? We don't force people to use every piece of our network. We're saying, hey, use our network to validate or send snapshots to, um, to show the status of your application, your, va- your data logic, your validation. Um, and then people can build these metagraphs, which are really kind of businesses on their self. They're allowed to build their own network uh, with a currency, um, without a currency. Uh, so it allows for more advanced um, features, which I would say is a little more complicated, but it's more flexible. And to kind of counter the complexity, we are rolling out. I mean, that'll be kind of the story of Constellation is just rolling out easier frameworks to make it easier. Okay. Nope. Good answer. Thank you. Um, And also add to that, James, um, one of the things that we've also kind of been thinking of how do you kind of pull uh, JVM libraries and related to uh, Scala to make it easier so not everybody has to be a Scala developer and you can see how the things really scale. Okay. We call them uh, Scala Scalas. No, I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> dad joke. I got kids, so I can't help. Good, <laughs> I, like um, I know Ben's Ben's not going to be able to talk about this, but James, can we get a DAG price prediction? So two things I just want to say on that real quick. First off, um, what we got used to in the bull market was looking for short-term gains, right? Like everybody was in it. Hey, let me get in. Let me flip it. And I'll make a few thousand dollars here and there. That is not how that's not how traditional investing works and that's not how bear market investing works either. Um, so I would encourage you, if you're looking for short term gains, you, sh- this is probably not the right place to go. You, this is a, something where if you believe in it long term, you look at the technology, you look at the team, you look at the partnerships and you say, Hey, long term, I think they're going to succeed in what they're trying to do. And I want to be a part of that long term. Then buying in the bear market is a great thing to do. Hold on to it. Wait until you reach some of those goals and you should make a lot of money. And uh, the way I usually approach prices is I just look at other projects and what their mark. I use this market cap of that just says if DAG reaches the market cap of AVAX, that's a 42X on the token. So again, I'm not saying this is not financial advice. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. But if just when you look at other projects and the, the potential there, um, Cardano, you know, it'd be a 90X. Um, so that's, that's kind of one way that I think about price prediction. Um, but again, n- we don't know. No, no one knows the future. No one knows when that's going to happen, when it's going to be. So no financial advice given here. Um, but that's how I think through it. So, and, uh, we'll leave Ben out of the price talk. Um, we don't, we don't want founders talking about prices. Um, what are your biggest partners except for the department of defense? Uh, well, we kind of separate ourselves, uh, on the federal side, we're working with multiple agencies, uh, in that side of things. So like I said earlier, it's, uh, the department of defense is not just like one customer. It's like thousands of customers that you're getting access to, right? We're building inroads for multiple customers to make it easier to deploy. So that's kind of like a one to many approach is the, the easy way to say that. Um, and then on the kind of, what do you say, crypto, small business side, uh, we've got several metagraphs in the pipeline right now that we're kind of treating with a white glove treatment to bring them on um, live as a metagraph when we take this thing live. So, Okay, very good. Um, any updates on the quant pro- partnership, which can be shared? Not right now. We're really focused on getting our tech out the door, like I said uh, July tw- uh, 10th is, is a big week. Um, and then following up, getting Metagraphs out the door. And then, you know, we'll start revisiting some of these bigger partnerships that we planted seeds a long time ago. So I'm excited to do that, but we've got things to do in our own ecosystem first. Yep. Okay. Totally, totally agree. Um, along with that, uh, this has been asked several times in here. Um, any collaboration between Finavant and Constellation in the case of the Stargazer wallet? Uh, we've had ongoing calls. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is, uh, I don't want to share anything that I'm not supposed to, but, um, you know, we talk very frequently. So. This is, this is why I love AMAs because I'm never quite sure what, what to share, what not to share. So I can just throw you know, it out it, there. Yeah. You know, the, the thing is like, it's, it's not like, do I want to share? Like if I, if I could share everything I would, but I want to respect like the privacy of other people and, um, kind of how we want to showcase things, right? Like I'm trying to move away from, oh man, we're, you know, a big partnership blurb and there's nothing like behind it. Right. Uh, and really kind of want to showcase technology alongside partnership, 
development uh, yeah. is my big thing. And so, yes, I would love to tell everybody about these things. Um, and personally, I don't really have a problem, but it's just, you know, do I have the consent of other companies, right? Yeah. Well, and when you announce a partnership, then the questions become when, when, when. And it's like, right. well, we'll... And what do you do? What do you do? And so I, I, I would say that we're taking um, every partnership in a very deliberate way to making sure they have a hook into our community, that we use their technology, right? It's kind of that, that, that shared mentality and community mentality, right? And so when we, we release something, it's not just going to be like, are we a, a partnership? Finovant went through our flight program. They're obviously pretty close to us. Um, as is everybody in the flight programs that, you know, our incubator that we went through over the last couple of years, um, I would say they're very uh, tech advanced, which is great. Uh, and we, we need a lot of those use cases that are coming onto our network that can show different ways of building out metagraphs uh, and support. So um, they're one of many. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, so this, this question's come up several times here as well. Um, did the Cardano, Cardano founder reply to you? And I just want to say, I was very, I loved your response. I thought that was very, you know, it would have been easy. Oh, for Diggles. The yeah, Benjamin Diggles. Oh, yeah, the other Diggles, Diggles response. Yeah. yeah, it would have been very easy to turn it into just like a mud flinging contest. Um, just appreciate, you know, that doesn't help anybody. But uh, any, any talks with Cardano since then? I, uh, you know, it's funny. I, had like an email correspondence years ago with them. And uh, so I wrote them back in a very similar fashion that Benjamin did. Uh, was like, hey, happy to walk through what we're doing. Clearly, you're kind of misguided on on what we're doing and all the different people we're talking about, uh, talking to, um, and they have not replied. No. Maybe, the, maybe they're busy. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. We'll go with that for now. Um, what's Ben's anticipation on adoption and at what rate can we expect adoption? And I mean, those are kind of subjective terms, but I'll let yeah. you be the subjective measure. -er. Yeah, I, th I think that we'll have a clear indication, you know, um, as I said, next, you know, in a couple of weeks, we're launching our integrations network, which is an isolated test net just for testing metagraphs. It's a stable environment. Uh, we currently have a test net up and running, but it's an unstable environment, testing protocol features uh, and different capabilities and whatnot. Uh, and so what we're doing is rolling out an integrations net. Uh, and once that's live, uh, we'll be bringing on metagraphs to test there. Uh, so taking them out of uh, the ones that are in test net out and putting in the integrations net. Um, and so I, I think a lot of people, uh, and I would say that a lot of developers in the space are really looking for things that are, are live and active. Um, so we, you know, we saw with Polkadot, they did, uh, I think it was a couple years in testnet that they were testing uh, parachains or at least a year. Um, I could have my facts wrong, but I kind of remember this like, you know, testing for a long time and there was kind of this holding pattern. And I think developers are really tired of that, right? Uh, Ethereum's got a lot of great tools out there. You're able to test, deploy things. And I think that next wave of developer adoption is going to come when tools are live, making it easier. Um, and so there's going to be waves of early adopters. Uh, there's going to be waves of people that want those frameworks that make it easy, the, the tooling a lot easier to deploy a metagraph, right? Um, and so the adoption, I, I think we're going to see a, a lot of adoption happen over the next, um, you know, well, when we release Metagraph, so over the next six months, we're gonna see a lot of adoption happen. Uh, we're hardening a lot of the technology and research that we're doing with the DOD. We're bringing that over to the, the, the public ledger and uh, Hypergraph network. Um, so you're gonna start to see more of those capabilities come in and all of those things are gonna create a new wave of adoption. And I think we're really primed to go after an industry that's not just uh, crypto isolated use cases, but it's kind of converging off-chain data with on-chain data. And what do those application looks like? What do those plugins look like that you can pull external APIs and work with um, distributed ledger? So I actually think you're going to see a lot of adoption uh, between now uh, and then it's just going to be kind of rolling. So I'm excited. I, like I said, I'm excited. I keep saying I'm excited. I probably say excited and data quite a bit on this call. <laughs> it's like yeah, your two, two favorite words, excited and, and data. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a lot of when questions. Um, when does the first project go on L0? Well, I'm not going to spoil all the fun. Um, I'm not gonna, like I said, just look out for, you know, July 10th is coming up. That's great. 
we're launching the integration network along with a lot of other tooling. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of progress over the course of the next month. Okay. And yeah. uh, this is this is a when question I get quite a bit, um, but when listing in big ex exchange? Yeah, I, I think everybody's got to take a little like uh, read of the weather right now and going, <laughs> who's under attack right now? It's centralized exchanges, right? Like um, uh, I am in talks with pretty much everybody in the central, the central exchange world. Uh, it is a very interesting time for them. And they're all being very, very cautious. Um, one thing that I will say is like, there is a lot of pressure under uh, US uh, exchanges right now, which is gonna give rise to a, a lot of the Asian exchanges and, and marketplace uh, to really thrive in this time. Um, so in talks, uh, can't say anything more on that, but it's uh, like, you just gotta read the weather on this one. <laughs> like big exchanges are, are not excited right. uh, to, to list stuff right now. Yep, this is this is not the right, right time for that. Um, Ben, after the 70 projects on the list in all this time, how many more have joined waiting for the launch of Metagraphs? Um, I don't know that it's more that have joined. It's more uh, the first rollout to be completely transparent. We want to do like a white glove uh, treatment. We want to understand the process of onboarding, document that process, those processes so that more community members can actually run with it and onboard more and more projects. Um, so really kind of my focus right now is to get, you know, a handful of projects just nailed so that they can educate other people, educate people in the community to document the process of onboarding more. And as I said earlier, I think a lot of people are waiting. We're also going to see more and more adoption come in as things uh, go live, right? It's not even just the waiting list. A lot of people have been waiting for a while uh, for our solutions to go to mainnet so I think we're going to see a lot more come out uh, in the near future. Okay. All right. Um, will Constellation ever have real, let's go real world assets rather than real life. I mean, they're real life on the blockchain too, but will Constellation ever have real world assets? What, what do you mean? Like real life like, assets? I don't know. To oh. I deal with like tokenizing real estate or things like that. I think... Just yeah, the, the landscape for security tokens is pretty interesting. It's still very nascent. Um, I do think that more of the regulatory pressures will push projects to just create a security token and provide the pathway to do that. It'll be whether we can actually get um, liquidity in that, that market. Uh, and do people really want to go through KYC or do they like the, the freedom of not having all that KYC? Uh, but I do think that's an, I mean, that's a look at data is a real life asset, right? I mean, that's right there alone. Um, the commoditization of data is a very fascinating space, right? Or commod taking a commodity and digitizing it is a really, really fascinating space. Well, how do you do it? It's the lines and columns that make up that, that unit that becomes that data type. So, uh, for sure, I think that's an incredibly fascinating space. Okay. Yeah. And if uh, one of the things I've learned most from you personally and from my, my time in the Constellation ecosystem is before I never thought about, I never thought that much about data and like how it ran the world and how it controlled everything. Um, but when you start to realize no data flow and how data moves around and how it's stored, I mean, that is everything. Then you start to see, oh, uh, that's where the, the hypergraph is really powerful for that. Well, you know, it's it's interesting you said that because, you know, when we started doing this, we had to like explain what big data was and the market out there and how it's used and who used it. And then you had this like data breach with Cambridge Analytics and Facebook and how they're making tons of money. And you start to question all these terms and services that you click OK to and you give your data. So they recommend products and you're like, OK, with it, because Instagram showed me a nice T-shirt. Um, and so we're as a, a society, we're starting to like figure out what they can do. Big data management companies like Cl Cloudera and Databricks started probably a decade ago, uh, maybe a little longer. And they were telling this uh, a very similar story around data management tools and going to enterprise companies and saying, hey, you need to do have a better data strategy. And they're like, well, what the fuck does that mean? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what that means. And so what they did, um, and I think that Constellation can do a better job about this, is like actually painting out 
uh, use cases around uh, around data. And so Cloudera, Databricks, all just were factories for pushing out use cases around big data, um, which brought in Palantir and all these other companies that really make up the, the data stack. Okay. No, that's very good. Very yeah. interesting. Yep. Yeah. Um, will we ever see a scenario in which the Department of Defense holds DAG, or will they use the tech without buying the token? Um, I I love this question. Everybody everybody like wants to know this question, right? Like, I don't know who holds all of our DAG, right? Like, I'm that's that's what like kind of a trustless ecosystem is about. You don't know who's holding DAG. What I will say is that our work with the government is largely around R and D. We're building features that we can relay and bring into the core protocol. We're also building out use cases. And like I said, the DOD is not just one customer. It's thousands of customers. And all those customers have different uses. They use public ledger. Uh, they, they're going to be using our public ledger, spinning up metagraphs, open source. We don't really know all of who's got DAG and what they're doing with it. What we are doing is building out features and functionality that will really kind of embrace utility of our network. Okay. Nope. I think that's a good answer. Uh, and basically, mo most questions I found are people that hold DAG wanting to know if it's going to go up. And so yeah. that the, most of the questions kind of filter down to that in different I think ways. That's more of that, that question, right? They're like, oh my God, is this person going to procure and, and buy DAG? A lot of what I see, and I'm actually working on publishing an article in like the next few weeks. Um, that really kind of talks through the different businesses of Constellation, how they all work, um, who's doing what for what. Um, and a lot of what I see is, is Constellation's kind of, I, I truly believe that we are the Web two, three um, tools that are plugging into Web 2. As such, we're coming up with business models that correlate or are on par with uh, cloud service providers. Right. And there's a, a fascinating shift going on around like pay as you go models. Right. Pay for the processing as you go. Uh, and how when do you use a decentralized distributed ledger? You want immutability around your data. Well, a lot of those customers don't want to build another Constellation hypergraph. They want to use Constellation as a clearinghouse or we become kind of the orchestrator of the network uh, of of their application where we facilitate the fees of uh, and using DAG uh, on the network, right? And so they don't really want to, they don't want to even hear about crypto. They just want to know it works, right? And this is a model that actually really anybody can go out there. They can actually spin up a Metagraph, create a business development team, go out and sell a use case and be like, hey, do you want to add immutability to your data set and start a business? Like it's not just Constellation here. People can actually go out and do this today and could actually go do the work for the DOD if they wanted to. There you go. There's a homework assignment for somebody in the audience. Go go do that. Um, Phony Turo says, DAG giveaway today. You know what? I will. I'll do a DAG giveaway. Um, I'll give away... I got to see how much... How much is 2,000 DAG work? I'll, I'll give away 2,000 DAG. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. So what you need to do if you want to enter this giveaway... Um, just comment hashtag DAG. Okay, and I'll do it a little bit later. We'll get through a few more questions here. Then I will give it away. So just comment hashtag DAG. Also, you have to be subscribed to me. There's the trick. Okay, so subscribe hashtag DAG, and then uh, we'll we'll do a giveaway here as we get a little closer to the end. So thank you guys all for watching. I do uh, do really appreciate your uh, your time. So um, had a few people ask about this. Any updates on the equity buying by the community? And I had about five people ask about this. So it must, uh, must be important to people. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, we kind of put a pause on that initiative to really focus on deploying technology. Uh, what we heard from the community was they really wanted to see the tech come out. So we put the equity play on hold. Uh, it's not that it's gone away. But I think right now we're really focused on, on getting the tech out the door, starting to see adoption, all the questions that came in earlier. How does DAG relate to everything? What does adoption look like? Can we flush out more use cases? How do all these pieces work? How do door technologies and IoT validation go down? Um, all of that's kind of been on our forefront before we actually make an equity offering uh, available. I still think it's a, a really um, unique uh, opportunity, right? Especially as we start to look at differentiating between uh, DAG and looking at equity, what are the different vehicles? 
um, how do you value the equity uh, of a company? It's a lot clearer than, than say, a cryptocurrency. So it's still kind of a, a great thought. They're, the structures are all together, um, but not right now. Not right now. Yep. You, if you're anything like my businesses I've run, you probably have a list of like, here's a thousand things we could do yeah. that are not necessarily on the roadmap somewhere, but they're there. We could do them yeah. and maybe someday, someday will. So. Yep. All about prioritizing and focusing. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Uh, how many people are on the whole constellation team? Um, I think we're probably at 25. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we've got a few questions about lattice lattice is the launch pad of constellation. Will there ever be a mobile app for, for this? Um, and Joseph says, can you ask about the future of lattice? You want to just talk a little bit about lattice? Yeah, absolutely. Um, lattice, uh, lattice gateway, uh, right now we've been seeing a lot. Um, we've been seeing a lot of, uh, governance proposals come in kind of adding new features, uh, adding new tokens, adding new rewards mechanisms. Uh, we just launched a product called Lattice, uh, Lattice Boost, I think is what we called it. We might've changed it last minute, so I might be wrong on that. But al essentially allowing people, allowing projects to add incentives for people to add liquidity uh, to their decks. Um, and really uh, what I would love for people to see on, on Lattice, what that tells us is kind of, what is the market for um, a decentralized exchange on Lattice? Like how involved are people? How much do they understand around adding liquidity to a DEX? Which gives us an idea of our user base and kind of the appetite for our, our product roadmap with Lattice. So. Okay. Nope. I think that's good. Um, how much of a road, how much of the roadmap is DOD feature driven versus constellation public ledger driven? Well, they, that's what I was kind of explaining before. They all kind of relate to the same thing, right? Like we're going down a path of hardening, what we call hardening solutions or productization of certain features uh, that are ultimately transferred into the, the core protocol, right? And a lot of these features that we're mapping out with the DOD are giving us the research of what enterprise scalability looks like uh, in, a, in our vein of data. Right. And so we're seeing kind of a leading customer with thousands of other uh, partners that come in kind of saying, hey, we need this for this to be able to work. Right. So all of that research and roadmap is being applied to our protocol, mm -hmm. which is just which the, the goal ultimately is to make this easier for any developer to come in and, and be able to build so that we're not doing custom managed solutions. That's they're all kind of transferred over to each other so that people can run their own business and build their own metagraphs. Okay. No, I think that's a good, that's a good answer. And if you, I don't know if your experience with working with the government has been anything similar to mine, what happens is the government needs everything easier and more mm -hmm. verbose than everyone else. So you end up building like a very verbose, easy thing. And then it's actually is really beneficial for your other users. Cause you might not have been as verbose or as made as easy um, that's been my yeah. experience. There's been, we've had a lot of, uh, scrutiny and critiquing of the technology that we've gone through. That's gotten us to think differently. Um, you know, cover any gotchas before deploying to a public ledger. Right. And I think that's something that's really hard to get is, is peer reviews in, in blockchain. There's a lot of armchair philosophers in yeah. blockchain that are like, oh, I'll peer review. I can tell you right now, we talked to so many people that wanted to peer review, but they really just wanted to do it for their own marketing purposes. It wasn't until we found the DOD that they gave us real constructive uh, feedback, criticism, needs and wants that we we're like, wow, this this really makes sense. Let's apply this here. Let's right. And so that in many ways is kind of like our peer review that's only making us more equipped to be more scalable. Um, and so that's in the output of the DOD work is having us go to other commercial partners that are system integrators. Now they hear that we've made, um, I actually just got a call. That's why I was late to this. I was talking with one of our, our partners. It's like Constellation's gone the furthest uh, out of any other blockchain company other than Simba Chain, which we are partnered with um, in the DOD, which is like a sign of validation. It's that credibility. Mm. 
that is giving us inroads into so many other use cases, right? Um, the door device, the door traffic miner is also giving us that credibility and being able to talk about IoT infrastructure, uh, which opens up a slew of other use cases beyond just like measuring foot traffic, but really understanding the firmware and how you create a light node, um, all things that are really rapidly evolving at, at Constellation that gets me excited. <laughs> yep. No, I can tell. And it's it's great having founders who are excited about what they're doing, even in the bear market. Yeah. Uh, in the bear market, you know, it's like, you, you know, I kind of, you know, I don't like the bear market for obvious reasons, like that we all don't like it. But it's there's so much focus that happens across every company. And that dinner I told you about last night was just, it was refreshing to hear that people were still focused. They're still positive And there's still a vibrant future for, for this industry. Um, and so much more potential. Yep, absolutely. Um, we got a few more here we'll get through. And then there is a giveaway again, hashtag DAG. Go ahead and comment. I'll give away 2000 DAG um, for that. Um, any information on fractionalized nodes for people who can't afford a node or on where to stake? Yes, um, we, we're still, it's still kind of in the mapping out and the roadmap and what that would look like and how that would be orchestrated. But it's definitely on top of our mind. Okay. So more details to come quickly. Yes. Um, Julia says, do you imagine immutable data lakes becoming an asset in and of itself and tradable, like notarized data lakes themselves becoming tradable on regulated financial exchanges? Uh, you'll have to... Uh, that's, yeah, above, so that's above my pay grade, so you'll have to... Uh, high level, uh, basically what Julius is saying, what is kind of what I talked about, the unified data um, data library is kind of a, is a data lake, essentially. Okay. Um, and so there is a big initiative that's happening uh, right now, and it's going to only compound uh, around kind of verifying the source of, of the data that goes into these unified lakes or data libraries, if you will. Uh, so that's really what he's saying. Um, and then the second question, I think what he's kind of pointing at is, can this data be used for uh, financial exchanges? So if I'm correct, what he's saying is like, Hedge funds um, are one of the largest purchasers of data right now because they want to get a, uh, an edge on, um, you know, buying and selling of stocks, right? So if they can get an edge on more information, clean that data, parse it, create some sort of thesis or algorithm out of that, they can get a, a, ahead of it. Uh, and so, yes, it's a very viable track for where um, a data exchange will go. Okay, very good. We'll do two last questions, and we'll do the giveaway, then we will wrap this up. Um, what do you consider as the greatest threat for Constellation not accomplishing their goals? Uh, that's an interesting question. That's uh, like two two negatives, right? Uh, I, I always feel like the community loves to like challenge me if I can be positive all the time. Um, <laughs> so throwing two negatives in there is great. What's the biggest threat? Um, the biggest threat... I kind of, I don't know, it's really tough. Right now, I think it's, um, man, that's a, that is a tough one. I don't think there's any threat on accomplishing our goals. So I would just admit that. Like, our the goals that we've set out are, are really kind of clear. I think it's, um, if I were to be the pragmatist would say, I think we have to articulate use cases around validated data a lot more clearly so that we can get that massive scale of adoption. Um, beyond that, I, I feel very confident in our roadmap and what we've set out to do over the next, yeah, it, you know, uh, at least the next six months that we've really kind of ironed out for the community. So, yeah. Yep. Nope. Like it. George, George Watson says, is there a threat? I think not. See, told you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll do this last question. Then we'll do the giveaway. Um, when will the next flight program be held? Man, you know, it's so funny. I thought somebody would ask that question today. And it's like, I, I actually was like thinking, oh man, maybe somebody. Um, right now, what we are, like I said, we're really focused on getting metagraphs out the door, um, which would then kind of give us a little more structure and framework for how we would do another fr uh, flight program. In the past flight programs, we're kind of educating people on how to create a cryptocurrency company. Uh, which kind of helped incubate several projects, Finavon, Jennyco, Cyberlete, uh, Alchemy, Geojam, like a lot of, we've seen some like good projects get out the door and, and run. Uh, the next tranche will be 
uh, looking at how people, you know, incubating people and educating people on how to build a metagraph. So actual technical competency going through the flight program will kind of be the next tranche. So that's kind of how we're thinking about the flight program V3. As, as such, like I said um, earlier, we're focusing on documenting the process of, of getting uh, metagraphs up and running to just make it easier. And at that point, then I'm, I'm sure we'll pull the ripcord and, and do another flight program and see a whole nother wave uh, of, of utility of, of the hypergraph. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and do this giveaway, and then we'll let Ben get back to changing the future. Um, so let me bring this up here. Uh, Passive D Live says, "Just send a hundred DAG to everyone," but then I couldn't use this fancy giveaway generator <laughs> thing, so uh, I can't do that way. Sorry. So we're gonna give away two thousand DAG. What you need to do is you need to just DM me on Discord. It's just James Pelton. Okay, it's, it's boring nowadays, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw here. This is everyone who commented hashtag DAG. I even put myself in there because, you know, if I win, I save <laughs> 2,000 DAG and it'd be great. Uh, Sylvester Korea, congratulations, 2,000 DAG. Again, just DM me on uh, Discord. It's just at James Pelton is my username there. Uh, Discord's made it a lot easier now. They took away the, the numbers at the end of your name. So just James Pelton, shoot me a DM. I'll get you 2,000. Uh, dag there i just want to say if you're watching this as a recording you were not able to win the live giveaway okay that always confuses people that was only for people who were here live so good reminder to be here live for the next one you can be part exactly. of our giveaways i got a question for you man what are your thoughts about the constellation ecosystem and what are you excited about Oh, that's a great question. Um, I what I am really looking forward to. So when I look around at the crypto space, you know, I talk to hundreds of projects every year. Most of them are just garbage. Like they're not actually doing anything. They're not changing the way anyone lives or anything like that. Someone tweeted um, a couple months ago, if blockchain technology went away, who would it affect? And outside of, you know, crypto Twitter, it's like, well, right now, not really many people. It's not really doing anything yet. And that's why when I first found Constellation and the projects that were running on Constellation or planning to run on Constellation, I was like, wow, these are all projects that would change the game. Like Jennyco, for example, or BioFi, like they're doing things um, that are actually useful and they couldn't do it without the blockchain. That's another thing. I see a lot of random businesses that just want a blockchain for some reason. I'm like, why are you doing that on the blockchain? It doesn't need to be. Um, so... That's why I love the ecosystem. And so I mean, I think long term, again, I'm, I'm not looking at this as a short term flip or anything like that. I want to be part of the future um, going forward. So I think in my opinion of what I see in the crypto space, the Constellation ecosystem is where I see the most real stuff actually happening. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited about it. And yeah, excited to talk with you and just kind of hear um, – you know, here's where question. things are at. My last question. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. what, what could we do better at Constellation? In one, one, one sentence, in your words. Um, make the price go up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. That's a, um, I mean, you know, the hardest thing is keeping, keeping people excited and interested through the bear market. Um, you know, during the bull market, when you see these huge price appreciations, it's easy to be excited and keep everyone's attention. Um, I'm seeing projects struggling a lot more keeping their community together. Um, so I, this isn't, I'm not saying you're doing a bad job of that, but just continuing yeah. to focus on the ecosystem and, um, yeah, cool. that's, that's what I would say. The community, you guys have a strong community, uh, as well, but I think you can keep growing that. Um, you know, even like some of these meme coins, I think there's things they're doing nothing useful, right? Yeah. Pepe is doing nothing of any value. Um, but they've built this community that is just obsessed with the community and what they're doing. And yeah. I think uh, that's that's a good way to hold things together through the bear market is having in a community that's obsessed. So yeah, more more interviews like this, absolutely. Just keeping the community as informed as you can. Um, I know the when questions get tiring over over time, but it's like those are, um, you know, because from our our standpoint, that's all we see is when things are launched. You know, that's all we see. So that's why it's like when, because otherwise it just kind of from a non from the outside, it looks like, oh, maybe they're not doing anything. You know, we're not seeing anything. So that's what I would say personally. 
well, we're not sitting around having margaritas all day. Yeah, right. Right. Well, and that's why I love interviews like this, because just here in, yeah, you're still working and working on working on partnerships, working on the technology. Um, yeah. We we know you're you're giving it your all each and every day. So thanks, James. I appreciate the time, man. And great question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I want to first thank the audience. You guys are amazing. Great questions. Great. Thanks for being here again. The only reason I probably, I mean, me and Ben, we, we get along well, but I probably never could have connected with Ben the way that I've been able to if I didn't have you guys, uh, the, the community, the audience coming to watch. So I appreciate you guys very much. Appreciate all the support. Please hit like on your way out. And uh, Ben, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, talk with me and talk with my community. Really appreciate it. Thanks, James. Thanks, community. Appreciate it. It's yep. awesome. And if there's anything I can do to help Constellation Ecosystem, just let me know. Always, always happy to do what I can. Will do. Thank you, All sir. Right. Take Have care, a- everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Appreciate you guys.